And at this one, I think, uh, hopefully this will play all right. This was sent to me by um, somebody who was in the Pyrenees. And this is uh, some fly that has obviously forgotten his sandwiches and has to go back. Why is somebody making that circle over the Pyrenees? What's the purpose? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Red in California, another one. This is one I took in the Lake District, September 11, 2005. Four parallel trails just over the Lake District. So my friend took this in Empsey near Skipton where I grew up. He still lives there. There's a grid pattern there. So obviously some kind of design. And you know, my feeling is that when you see these grids, they're put in grids for some reason. I'm not entirely sure what the re re reason is. I've got some ideas which I'll mention later on. Uh, this was from Paris, obviously, as you see. Now, this is what really sort of switched me on to chemtrails. This is a picture I took out of my little, I've got a little sort of office room at home, study room type thing. Quarters to 10 in the evening, one sunny June evening, I looked out the window, I'd be typing away my beaver on my emails as I often am, and that's the site that was out of my window. And I sent that to the local paper, and they actually published it, and I said to them, I wrote a letter, which they actually published, I didn't think they would publish it. I said, I don't think these are aircraft trails. I didn't say what I thought they were, but they published it. And uh, same, same picture, same time, or not same picture, actually just a slightly zoomed out version. Nine intersecting trails, possibly ten. So there's somebody going to tell me that there was a, some kind of Red Arrows air show over my house, or over Derby, quarter to ten in the evening. I don't think so. So how long do chemtrails last? Well, let's see. I've got another video clip here. Hopefully this will behave itself. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. This is another little time lapse. Very easy to do time lapse. All you need is a bit of software you can download for free and a webcam. And then you can make time lapse. And another bit of software such as Virtual Dub. Uh, I've got another one called Fast Movie Processor. And you can make a time lapse. And I measured that chemtrail lasts at least 18 minutes, obviously it's longer, you can guess that, but I wanted to make some kind of definite measurement, and I was able to measure a, a figure of 18 minutes from the computer's clock. Easy to measure stuff. Let's try and have a scientific approach to work out what's going on as far as we can. I'm not a scientist, but I do have a background in a scientific discipline, which is software engineering. 18 minutes is how long they last. Um, basically, I'm not going to read all of this out, but chemtrails are not contrails, and here's six reasons I can give you why they're not the same. The visibility of the trails on satellite photographs, again, we've already covered that. You wouldn't see that with ordinary contrails. There's just not enough mass in them. Time of trail persistence. Some of these trails can persist for half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. If you went out on a, summer's, on a winter's day and you breathed out, your breath hung around for 10, 15 minutes, wouldn't you think that was a bit odd? Because essentially it's the same condensation type of process that you're seeing with chemtrails. Um, so time of trail position is too long. Irregular pattern of appearance, this is one that a lot often people will miss. If this is caused by civilian air traffic, as people want to claim, then Wherever you live, you know, in England or Scotland, you're, you're going to see over your part of the ground roughly the same number of civilian air flights on every given Monday, Tuesday, whatever. So when you can have a bright sunny summer's day one week and see no trails, and then, you know, one Tuesday, then the next Tuesday the sky is full of chemtrails, how can that be? How can that be? Because you've still got the same level of civilian air traffic. And you've also got the height and appearance of trails. Now, this is something I've been trying to pin down more recently. Um, in fact, I was in the air this morning. I flew up from East Midlands Airport. We found the captain told us we were at 28,000 feet. There's no trail from out in the back of our aircraft that I could see. In other words, there is actually a lower, lower lowest minimum height, despite what they put on one, some websites now. Uh, there are some websites now I came across one recently. It says that a, a contrail can actually form a ground level that's what it said on this website recently. That 28,000 feet, you don't get, get contrails below 28,000 feet. 
That's, that's, that's the figure. Uh, number of trails seen simultaneously at a given time, I've just shown you some pictures. It's just ridiculous to suggest that you can have that number of aircraft over your location when it's not an air display of some kind. Just ridiculous to suggest that. And then this is another example I've tried to show here, broken trails. This is a very interesting picture. I've taken pictures like somebody else actually sent me this, a guy called Dave, who lives uh, in, on Merseyside somewhere. You can see this curious shadow. What, what's forming that shadow? Very strange. I've got a couple of other strange pictures. I haven't had time to put them into this presentation. I've got like one where you've got an, what I call an unkem trail, where the chem trail seems to have gouged out a, a clear section from a cloud. It's very strange, but I didn't have time to put that into the end. Um, so we've got a few, I'll just flip through a few more pictures of uh, planes with chemtrails. Some of these which uh, uh, have been posted on the internet a while ago, because you may have seen some of these before. But this is unusual because you seem to have a plane here with uh, five sort of sections of trail, but only four engines. Poss possibly even six. So the number of trails doesn't appear to be quite matched with the number of engines. And you've got this weird sort of iridescent rainbow effect as well. Uh, can't see it too well on this. These huge trails coming out the back of this plane. And I'm pretty sure that's not chemtrails. That's not contrails, it's chemtrail. And this is an interesting picture. Um, how come these planes are so close together flying like that? You don't get planes flying like that. They're unmarked. They're unmarked planes. I had a lady, I did this, uh, this talk in uh, Isle of Wight a few weeks ago. A lady came up to me and said she'd managed to film. Uh, an unmarked aircraft at Gatwick Airport, all white. She did give me the, send me the video, but unfortunately it was a bit too blurred with that. I could see what she meant, but I, wasn't, I decided not to use it because it was a bit, just a bit too blurred. I'm skipping over some of these now, quickly. Now this is very interesting. I mean, this could be a Photoshop job, I'm not sure, but uh, there's the website for it. You've got this circular craft leaving a chemtrail. Very strange. So what's doing it? And then this was on a Flick R side slideshow that somebody posted. You've got this shadow ahead of the plane and a shadow where the chemtrail is as well. Very strange shadow effects. Another one here that was on picked up on the Coast to Coast website a couple of years ago. Where's the plane? Where's the plane? Some people are suggesting that what's putting these things there are not, they just, they just look like planes, but they're not. I don't know whether that's true or not. I can't tell you. I don't know. Um, we've got, basically, I'm not going to play this for a short time, it's a bit long, but there's um, an NBC4 um, News LA. They did a two-part story on chemtrails in 2006, about 10 minutes. And they did actually, you know, they didn't just debunk it, they basically showed some unusual pictures and said they thought they went and talked to Rosalind Peterson. She talked about the burying samples and the, the water that she'd um, been sampling. Uh, I'll not play that clip though because it's um, going to take up too much time. What I will say is something that I've tried to do, and you can all try and do this as well if you wish, or do, do as much of this as you wish. People have tried to challenge official agencies, uh, as I alluded to a few minutes ago, uh, as to what's actually the deal with chemtrails, what's going on. You always get the same response. Cliff Carnicom, uh, he wrote to the EPA. That's the Environmental Protection Agency in the USA. And it is, you know, these, these institutes now, as you know, have really essentially got all well in names, really. Uh, it's not the, you know, it's not the uh, Environmental Protection Agency. It's probably the Environmental Abuse Agency, I should think. But basically what they end up saying is, and I'll try and get the key phrase, the EPA is not involved in or aware of any applications or actual spraying of chemical, biological or toxic substances as claimed in your past correspondence, or on the above or, or the websites. So they're just saying they're not aware of it. They don't say it's not happening, they say they're not aware of it. Uh, and then somebody else wrote to the US Air Force, uh, and this is quite a good one. Uh, the, the term chemtrail is a hoax that began circulating approximately four years ago, which asserts the government, it says, is involved in a joint federal program a covert spraying of the general public. <clears throat> the chemtrails are most often described as unusual contrails or contrail patterns 
seen coming from military or civilian air and civilian aircraft. The chemtrail hoax has been investigated and refuted by many established and accredited universities, scientific organisations and major media publications. But as I recall, this latter doesn't list one of them. So contacted sell that's being debunked 50 times. I've heard Ian Punnett say it on coast to coast. 